Good morning. Our topic for today is about perform estimation and basic calculation, which is under crop production. So for the learning objectives for this topic, we have number one, perform estimation and basic calculation. Number two, show accuracy in estimation and uh, calculation. And uh, number three, give importance to estimation and uh, calculation. An advantage of knowing the performing estimation and the basic calculation is knowing how much of the resources are to be prepared and used. Uh, normally job requirements are identified, time needed to complete a work task is estimated. So accuracy is a necessary skill in estimation and calculation. So this can make a lot of good in farm operations and also allows wise of use time. It also helps uh, enhance productivity and the right measurements can give more profit. Nothing is also wasted nor lost. Everything is maximized. So thus a smooth farm operation can come from knowledge of uh, performing estimation and calculation. So let's talk about farm inputs. So there are resources used in uh, farm production or crop production uh, we have the chemicals, the equipment, feed, seed, and the energy of these farm inputs. So let's check the items below for the guide. So we have the first one, which is the chemicals like fertilizers and insecticides. So when you say fertilizers, um, it can be uh, organic or inorganic. For example, of an organic fertilizer are cow manure, bone meal, organic compost, and green manure crops. So when you say inorganic um, and chemical fertilizers, these are made up of different formulation to suit a uh, variety of specified uses. So this fertilized um, group or fertilizer group as sodium nitrates, ammonium sulfate, and ammonium salts, chemical compounds containing nitrogen in amid form, and animal and plant byproducts. The next farm inputs we have also equipment. So farmers are assisted in a wide range of day-to-day -day operation by modern machineries and tools. So these duties include planting seeds, applying chemicals, feeding and maintaining livestock and harvesting. So hence, um, this is tools still plant, spray, cultivate and harvest. So making the job of farmers less burdensome so tractors, hand tools, and electronic tools comprise these implements. So they may be costly, but necessary with proper use and maintenance, they can be a wise investment also. The next farm inputs, we have a feed or feeds. So safe animal food and fluids ensure healthy animals and people. So these are food given to the animals, which includes um, plant cuts and carried to them or domesticated livestock such as cattle, goats, sheep. We have also horses, chickens, and pigs. Um, we use molasses, seaweed, sprouted grains, and legumes. Native green grass, fish meal, and concentrate mix are some feed types. So warning is made on certain types of molds, toxins, or poisonous weeds mixed into a feed source that can cause economic losses uh, due to sickness or death of the animal. The next farm inputs, we have seed. So a seed, um, normally plant come from seeds. So a good seed produce quality crops and increase production. So selecting a good seeds uh, ensures success in farm production. So seeds then must be viable. So with the ability to germinate and produce strong, healthy plants. And also the seeds must be uh, fully matured with big, round and bulky features, not damaged or free from any infestation and diseases. Fresh and clean, cured, harvested, crushed, washed, dried, and stored. The last farm inputs uh, is energy. Of course, this is very important because the food systems activities and consume a lot of energy. So from the manufacture and application of agricultural inputs such as fertilizers and irrigations through crop and livestock production. So preparation is the key. Uh, take note with the conscious effort to prepare these farm inputs. 
um, the percentage to succeed, succeed in your farm operation is very high. So these requirements make the venture less scary to pursue um, since the list of procurement has been laid out and specified. So this space of identifying the different farm inputs and making them available is very relevant to uh, complete the work and see come into fruition. So farm inputs or requirements are deemed necessary, therefore, to accomplish a set goals in farm operations, embarking on a business half-heartedly would mean coming unprepared and waste and the waste of time, uh, talent, and treasure. A work undone is better than a work half done. Next, we will talk about farm labor. So there are different uh, labor requirements in um, land preparation, we have in planting and plant care. So these are necessary for efficient farm operations. So the labor requirements in land preparation, we have plowing using tractor. We also have the clearing of land using a hoe. Um, Plowing use an animal, harrowing using hand tractor, clearing of the land um, using a hoe, um, harrowing using a hand tractor. We also have the pulling of uh, seedlings, um, transplanting of seedlings. Um, that is for the labor requirements in planting or and for the labor requirements in plant care, we have the fertilizer application, the pest control, the irrigation, we have the weeding, the harvesting, threshing rice, um, drying rice. We also have the threshing corn. We have the drying corn. And of course, last but not the least is the what we call the storing corn or the storing uh, rice uh, grain. So uh, farm labor and farm inputs are very important, especially when estimating farm inputs and labor requirements. So we were going to talk about estimation under farm inputs and labor requirements. So this process of estimating farm inputs and labor requirements is definitely an advantage in a productive farm operations. Um, the study um, the following formula. So we will study the following formula. So let's talk about estimated irrigation expenses from planting up to the last harvest. So we will follow the formula. Irrigation expenses is equal to the price of water divided by volume times the number of volume divided by day and times total number of days. Okay, for the estimated number of workers hired to perform irrigation from planting to harvest, we use the formula. Estimated number of workers is equal to worker divided by the square area times total irrigated area. Letter B, for the estimated number of days for spraying insecticides, uh, this is for uh, per worker. The formula that must be followed is estimated number of days is equal to the number of days divided by square area times total land area. For the estimated cost of the insecticides um, used for spraying, uh, we follow the formula estimated total cost is equal to the price divided by insecticides times number of insecticides divided by the square area times total land area. For the estimated workers needed for spraying insecticides in one day, uh, we follow the formula estimated workers is equal to the number of workers divided by square area times total land area. And last, for the workers' salary during insecticide spraying, the formula that we follow is a workers' salary is equal to the salary divided by day times total number of days. Okay, for letter C, uh, when uh, we are talking about estimated number of weeding operation, so for the estimated number of workers needed in weeding, so the formula that we use is estimated workers is equal to the number of workers divided by the square area times total land area. 
And for the worker salary during weeding, the formula that we follow is worker's salary is equal to the salary divided by worker times total number of workers. And for the estimated number of workers employed during harvesting, we follow the formula workers employed is equal to the number of workers divided by square area times total land harvesting area. Okay, so let's have an example uh, problem for uh, this following um, formulas. Okay, so we have here the gathered data for estimation and calculation purposes. So for the total land area, we have 50,000 square meter. The amount of fertilizer that we use is 20 pesos per kilo. Number of days consumed in planting the area is two days. Number of workers that planted the area, five workers. Amount of salary paid in planting the area, 300 per day. Number of workers who fertilize the area from planting up to the date of this survey, two workers, quantity of fertilizer used from planting up to the date where survey was made, 200 kilos, amount of salary paid in applying fertilizer from planting to the date of this survey, 300 per day, quantity of fertilizer to be used after the survey until final harvesting, 500 kilos, number of workers required to perform fertilization after the survey until final harvesting, two workers, and the last amount of salary paid in applying fertilizer from planting to the date of this survey is 300 per day. So for the solution based on the given data, the letter A, which is we need to find the total amount of salary paid in planting the area. So the formula that we use is total amount of salary is equal to the number of days times the number of workers times amount of salary. So we substitute that. So number of days, we have two days. Number of workers, we have five workers. And amount of salary, we have 300 pesos per day, which is based on the data given. Uh, so the answer or the total amount of salary is 3,000 pesos. For letter B, total amount of fertilizer consumed from planting up to the date of the survey, we use the formula total amount of fertilizer is equal to the amount of fertilizer per kilo times the number of kilos. So to substitute that, our amount of fertilizer per kilo is 20 and the number of kilos is 200 kilos. So the answer is 4,000. Next, we have letter C, total amount of salary paid in fertilizing the area from planting up to the date of the survey. So the formula that we use is total amount of salary is equal to the number of days times the number of workers times the amount of salary. So let's substitute. So two is the number of days, two is the number of workers and the salary amount um, of per worker is 300 per day. So the answer is 1,200. Then letter D, to the total amount of fertilizer consumed after the survey until final harvesting. So the formula is total amount of fertilizer is equal to the amount of fertilizer per kilo times the number of a kilo. So substitute that. 20 is the amount of fertilizer per kilo and 400 the number of kilos. So we multiply that 20 times 400, that is 8,000. And last, total amount of salary paid in fertilizing the area after the survey until final harvesting. So we use the formula total amount of salary is equal to the number of days times the number of workers times the amount of salary. Then we need to substitute that. So the number of days is four, the number of workers is two, and the amount of salary is 300 per day. So our answer is 2,400 pesos. Okay, so our total cost of expenses or sum total of expenses are we have the specification and the amount. So salary paid in planting the area, we have 3,000 pesos. Fertilizer consumed from planting up to date of the surveys, 4,000 pesos. Salary paid in fertilizing the area from planting up to the date of survey is 1,200 pesos. We have also fertilizer consumed after the survey until final harvesting. We have 8,000 pesos. And the last uh, salary paid in fertilizing the area after the survey until final harvesting 
is 2,400 pesos. So the total amount or the sum total of expenses is 18,600 pesos. So that's how we estimate uh, and uh, calculate the different um, problems. Okay, so let's talk about now performing basic workplace calculation. So we have most common surface areas, uh, which are the first one, we have the triangle. Second, we have rectangle. Third, we have the square, circle, rhombus, parallelogram, and the last, we have trapezo. Okay, so let's talk about how to get uh, the area of the triangle. So the formula to get the area of the triangle is area of the triangle is equal to 0.5 times base times height or 0.5 times B times H. So let's have an example. So we have the given our base is 3 centimeter and height is equal to 2 centimeter. So for the solution, of course, our formula is area of the triangle is equal to 0.5 times base times height. So uh, substitute that. So 0.5 is constant times our base is 3 centimeter and our height is 2 centimeter. So multiply 0.5 times 3 centimeter times 2 centimeter. Our answer is 3 centimeter is squared. So that is our uh, area of triangle. Next surface is about um, the area of square and the area of a rectangle. So the formula of the square and the rectangle is the same. So area of square or rectangle is equivalent to length times width or L times W. So take note that if you have square, the four sides are equal. And for the rectangle, the length is, the two lengths are the same and the width are the same. For example, our given is for the square, we have the length 2 cm and the width is 2 cm. While for the rectangle, the length is 5 cm and the width is 3 cm. So for the solution, we just um, follow the formula. Area of square or rectangle is equal to the length times width. So apply that. So area of square is equal to 2 cm times 2 cm. So our answer is 4 cm is squared. For the area of rectangle, we have 5 cm times 3 cm. So our answer now is 15 cm is squared. So that's how we compute uh, the square and the rectangle areas. Next, we have the rhombuses and the parallelograms. So for the rhombus and parallelograms, our formula is area of rhombus or parallelograms is equal to the base times height or B times H. So for example, our given for the rhombus, we have the base is in three centimeter, the height is two centimeter, and for the parallelograms, the base is 3.5 centimeter and the height is 3 centimeter. So we need to substitute using the formula. So for the rhombus, the area of rhombus is equal to 3 centimeter times 2 centimeter. So our answer now is 3 centimeter is squared. Okay, so I think the answer is 6 centimeters squared. That's wrong because it's multiplication. So 3 times 2 is 6 and uh, centimeter times centimeter, that is squared. So the answer is 6 centimeter is squared. Yeah. Next, we have the area of parallelogram is equal to 3.5 centimeter times 3 centimeter. So our answer is 10.5 centimeter is squared. Next, if the surface area is trapezooms, so the formula that we follow is area of trapezoo is equal to 0.5, which is constant, times base plus top times height, or 0.5 times base plus A times H. Okay, so uh, take note that uh, 
that the uh, the given is base is equal to four centimeter, our top is two centimeter, and the height is two centimeter. So we need to substitute for the solution. So for the formula, so eight of trap area of trapezium is equal to 0.5 times, which is our base is four centimeter plus the top is two centimeter times two centimeter. So first we simplify uh, the number inside the bracket so four centimeter plus two centimeter that is six centimeter and then we multiply so 0.5 times six centimeter times two centimeter our answer is six centimeter squared lastly for the surface area we have circles so circles we follow the formula area of the circle is equal to one fourth times pi times d times d or one fourth times pi times d squared or 0.25 times pi times d times d or 0.25 times uh, pi times d squared or um, area of circle is equal is equal to pi r squared where r is the half of diameter so take note that pi is equivalent to 3.14 which is constant so let's have an example so the given is the diameter is 4.5 centimeter so for the solution we substitute so area of circle is equal to 1 fourth times 3.14 which is our pi times 4.5 centimeter times 4.5 centimeter that is our diameter or D is equal to, so we need to simplify the number inside the bracket and then uh, divide it into four. So our answer now is 15.9 centimeter is squared. That is our um, area of circle. Okay, so we're done with the different um, performing basic work place calculations, especially in the uh, surface area. So let's talk about now uh, metric conversion. So the units of length in a metric conversion, the basic unit of length in the metric system is the meter or M. So take note that one meter is equivalent to 10 dm or decimeter is equal to 100 centimeter is equal to 1000 millimeter. Next is 0 0.1 meter is equal to one decimeter is equal to 10 centimeter is equal to 100 millimeter. Next, we have 0 0.01 meter is equal to 0 0.1 decimeter is equal to one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter. Next, we have 0 0.001 meter is equal to 0 0.01 decimeter is equal to 0 0.1 centimeter is equal to one millimeter. Next, we have one kilometer is equal to 10 hm is equal to um, 1000 meters. So next we have 0.1 kilometer is equal to one hectometer is equal to 100 meter. And then 0 0.01 kilometer is equal to 0 0.1 hectometer is equal to 10 meter. And lastly, 0 0.001 kilometer is equal to 0 0.01 hectometer is equal to one centimeter. Next, we have the units of a surface. Take note that the basic unit of area in the metric system is the square meter or m squared, so which is obtained by the multiplying a length of one meter by a width of one meter. So here are some example of the conversion. So if you have one meter squared is equal to 100 decimeter decimeter squared is equal to 10,000 centimeter squared is equal to 1 million millimeter squared. So 0 0.01 meter squared is equal to 1 decimeter squared is equal to 100 centimeter squared is equal to 10,000 millimeter squared. 0 0.001 meter squared is equal to 0 0.01 decimeter squared is equal to 1 centimeter squared is equal to 100 millimeter squared. 0 0.00001 meter squared is equal to 0 0.00 0 0.01 decimeter squared is equal to 0 0.01 centimeter squared is equal to 1 millimeter squared. 1 kilometer squared is equal to 100 hect hectare squared is equal to 1 million meter squared. And 0 0.01 kilometer squared is equal to 1 hectare squared is equal to 10,000 meters squared. And 
0.00001 kilometers squared is equal to 0.001 hectare squared is equal to 1 meter squared. Take note that 1 hectare is equivalent to 10,000 meters squared because 100 meter times 100 meter is equal to 10,000 meter is squared. So now let's talk about how to compute surface areas of a canal cross section and farm uh, surface area. So let's first we have how to determine or determination of the surface areas of canal cross section. So there are two. We have the canal cross section. So where the area of A, B, C, D, as you can see in the picture, hatch on the above drawing is called the canal cross section and has a trapezium uh, shape. So that's the formula to calculate its surface is similar to the formula used to calculate the surface area of the trapezium. So formula that we follow is surface area of canal cross section is equal to 0.5, which is constant, times base plus top line times canal depth, or is equal to 0.5 times B plus A times height. So where uh, B is base is equal to bottom width of the canal, top line or A is equal to the top width of the canal, canal depth or H is equal to the height of the canal from the bottom of the canal to the top of the embankment. For the wetted cross section of the canal, so the area of ABCD, as you can see in the picture, hatch on the above drawing is called the wetted canal cross section or wetted cross section. So it also has a trapezium shape and the formula to calculate its surface area is we have the surface area of the wetted canal cross section is equal to 0.5 times base plus top line times water depth or 0.5 times B plus A1 times H1, whereby B is base, bottom width of the canal, um, top line is A1 is equal to top width of the water level, water depth H1 is equal to the height of the depth of the water in the canal from the bottom of the canal to the water level. So let's have an example. So we have here the picture shown or the given problem. So for the canal cross section, uh, the base is 1.25 meter, the top line or A is 3.75 meter, and the canal depth is or height is equal to 1.25 meter. So we just follow the formula. So area is equal to 0.5 times B plus A times H. So substitute that. So 0 0.5 times our base is 1.25 meter, our top line is 3.75 meter, and our height is 1.25 meter. So the answer is 3.125 meter is squared. For the canal wetted cross section, our base is equal to 1.25 meter, top line is um, equal to 3.25 meter, water depth is uh, equal to one meter. So the formula for the wetted cross section is area is equal to 0 0.5 times B plus A1 times H1. So substitute 0 0.5 times 1.25 meter, which is the base, and the um, top line A1 is 3.25 meter, and the height or the water depth is one meter. So our answer is 2.25 meter is squared. Next, to determine the surface area of the farm, if we have the field or the field of the farm in a regular regular shape, rather, so let's have an example. So as the picture shown, we have the regular shape of our field. So the given is the length of field is 50 meter and the width of field is 30 meter. So for the solution, that's uh, we need to substitute. So remember that the formula of area is equivalent to length times width. So substitute that. So our length is 50 meter and our width is 30 meter. So the answer is 1,500 meter is squared. So if the there is a question, what is the area of the same field expressed in hectares? So um, since our answer is expressed in meters squared, so we need to convert the meters squared into hectares. So our answer now is, for the solution, the formula, surface area in hectare is equal to the surface area in square meter divided by 10,000 because um, 
one hectare is equivalent to 10,000 square meters. So surface area in square meter is 1,500 square meters. So divided by to 10,000. So our answer now is 0.15 hectare. So what if the field is irregular shape? So for the irregular shape, as the picture shown, we need to divide the shape or the area into different regular shapes or regular field shapes or surface area. So the division of a regular shape into regular area. So we have uh, two shapes. We have the square shape, the rectangle, and the triangle, and then measure the length, the width, and the base and the height of the different uh, regular areas. So for the surface area of the square, our area is equivalent to length times width, so that is 30 meter times 30 meters. So our answer now is 900 meters squared. For the surface area of the rectangle, our formula is length times width, so 50 meter times 15 meters. So our answer now is 750 meters squared. And for the last, the surface area of the triangle, our formula is the area of the triangle is equal to 0.5 times beta times height. So 0.5 times 20 meter times 30 meter, the answer is 300 meters squared. And then we need to total or to add the total uh, three surface areas, the square, rectangle, and triangle. So total surface area of the field is A is equal to area of the square plus area of rectangle plus area of triangle is equal to 900 meters squared plus 750 meters squared plus 300 meters squared. So our answer or the total uh, field of the irregular areas is 1,950 meter is squared. Okay, so now let's talk about introduction to volume. So for the introduction to volume, take note that the volume or V is the content of a body or object. Take for example, a block. So a block has a certain length, width, and height. So with these three data, the volume of the block can be calculated using the formula V or block is equal to the length times v times height or l times w times h so for example calculate the volume of the above block so the given um is we have the length four centimeter the width is three centimeter and the height is two centimeter so let's follow the formula so length times v times height then sub Substitute that our length is four centimeter, our width is three centimeter, and our height is two centimeter. Then multiply four times three times two. Our answer now is twenty-four cubic centimeter. So take note that the volume of this block is expressed in cubic centimeters, written as centimeter. Volumes can also be expressed in cubic decimeter and cubic meters. So etc. Okay, for the units of volume, the basic unit of volume in the metric system is a cubic meter, so which is obtained by multiplying a length of one meter by a width of one meter and a height of one meter. So let's have an example of the conversion. We have the one cubic meter is equal to 1,000 cubic decimeter is equal to 1 million cubic centimeter is equal to um, 1 billion mil cubic millimeter. 0 0.001 cubic meter is equal to 1 cubic decimeter is equal to 1,000 cubic centimeter is equal to 1 million cubic millimeter. And 0 0.000001 cubic meter is equal to 0 0.001 cubic decimeter is equal to 1 cubic centimeter is equal to 1,000 cubic millimeter. And 0 0.000000001 cubic meter is equal to 0 0.000001 cubic decimeter is equal to 0 0.001 cubic centimeter is equal to one cubic millimeter. Take note that one cubic decimeter is equal to one liter and one cubic meter, which is equal to 1,000 liters. Next, we need to talk about introduction to percentage. So in relation to agriculture, the words percentage will be met regularly. For instance, 60% uh, of the total area is irrigated during the dry season. In this section, the meaning of the word percentage will be discussed. So for example, uh, we have 5%, which is equivalent to 5%. This is 
which is equal to 5 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.05. 20% is equal to 20 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.20. 25%, 25 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.25. 50% is equal to 50 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.50. 100% is equal to 100 divided by 100 is equal to 1. And 150% is equal to 150 divided by 100 is equal to 1.5. So if there is a question, how many oranges are 1% of a total of 300 oranges? So the 1% of 300 oranges is 3 oranges. So our answer is 1% of 300 oranges is equal to 1 divided by 100 times 300 is equal to 3 oranges. We also have other examples such as 6% of 100 cows. We have 6 divided by 100 that times 100, that is 6 cows. So we also have 15% of 28 hectares. The answer is 4.2 hectares. 80% of 90 irrigation projects, we have 72 projects. We have 150% of the monthly salary of 100 pesos. Uh, our answer is 150 pesos and the 0. 0.5, sorry, 0.5% uh, of 194.5 liters. The answer is 0.9725 liters. So for the discussion today, the references. And for the disclaimer, I agree by Sir Dan, it's an educational vlog. The purpose of this vlog is to provide free education, to discuss lessons and clarify issues related to agriculture. The channel owner wishes to thank the trustworthy resources that have helped make this edit vlog possible. Any opinions or views shared in this vlog are also personal and belong to I agree by Sir Dan. The views of any person that is directly or indirectly connected to the owner do not inherently represent them. In addition, any dependency you put on the materials included therein is solely at your own risk. Finally, if you need more details or have questions, please feel free to contact the owner. And of course, last but not the least, thank you for the following. Tristan Laruan, Maurice Gravides, of course, De La Salle Arnetta University and Vival Publishing House Incorporation. Thank you and goodbye.